God is resisting you. Whether you can see it or not, God's resisting you because his word says so. You know how you break that? Humble yourself and let go of this stuff and trust in the grace and the power of the almighty God. That's how you break that cycle, amen? amen. So here's Solomon. God appeared yet again to him. Let's see where this goes. Now we can go to chapter 11. Verse 1, but, usually when that starts out a sentence, it's probably going the wrong direction. But, King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites and the Amorites, excuse me, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonianites, Zidonian, oh man, and Hittites. Just forgive my poor pronunciation. Of the nations concerning which the Lord had said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after, other, uh, after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Let me just say, it wasn't the volume that was the problem. <laughs> Although that probably pre presented enough of a problem of its own. But it was the choice. God said, don't do it. God said, don't do it. Don't do this. When they went into the land, he said, don't do this. God has warned Solomon twice already. Follow after my way or else. He's appeared to him personally twice saying, follow after me, not this way. If you don't follow after me, these are the consequences. And yet, what did Solomon do? His own way. There was a lot that I think God could have let slide. But when it came to serving other gods. And when it came to building altars and sacrificing their children to Molech. When it came to literally thumbing, I almost gave you the finger. When it came to literally saying, up yours God, I'm going to do my way. I think God had had enough. And all that privilege and all that wisdom and all that stuff that God had given to Solomon meant absolutely nothing when it came to Judgment Day. Why? Because he had disobeyed God. He had disobeyed God and he brought an accursed thing into the house of Israel because he did not follow after God's word. Let's see. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that, the, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of, his, of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did his father, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build high place for Shemoth, the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed under their gods. When he made that first compromise of convenience he doomed himself because what he should have done then is sent Pharaoh's daughter packing you hear what I'm saying 
When God shows up to you and tells you you're going the wrong way, don't think you can keep going that way. When God shows up and knocks on the door of your heart and says, hey, that's the wrong direction, buddy. You need to turn around. I don't care who you are. You better, by God, turn around. When God comes to you and says, hey, I don't like what you're doing. Don't think you can keep going without facing his judgment. You better stop. You better head the other direction. And you better do it pretty daggone fast. But he kept that life. And he got himself some more. I'm saying the quantity wasn't the issue. It was the ones he picked. Because they were directly against God's word. You know the thing is that we do this to God all the time. We know what's right. We know what's right to do. We have the Spirit of God, don't we? We know what's right. We know what God has called us to do. We know we're to love God and love one another. But oftentimes we say, God, I'm taking a break. <laughs> right? Don't we do it? God, look the other way for today. I'm just not up for it today. And let me tell you, I do it. It's not something I'm proud of. Don't get me wrong. It's not something I recommend doing. I'm just telling you I'm human. Sometimes I don't feel like being a Christian. Sometimes I don't feel like being a, a preacher. Sometimes I don't feel like, I mean, just sometimes I don't want to do it anymore. But then I've forsaken the first and foremost commandment, haven't I? Love God. And I've forsaken the other one. Right? Love y'all as God loved y'all. And if I were to rely on my dad, who founded the ministry, or if I were to rely on all the, quote, good things I've done, I would be sorely, I would be measuring myself by all the wrong things. You hear what I'm saying? Because just as quick as God can grant blessings and deliverance, you can call on, you can call his judgment on your life as well. The Old Testament says in the day that a, that a righteous man turns from his righteousness, what? All of his righteousness is forgotten. See, but God's also very fair. He says in the day that a wicked man turns from his wickedness, all his wickedness is forgotten. Gone. Colossians says he's blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us, right, Paul? That's right. Love that scripture. Love that scripture. It's yeah. Gone. 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 The grand jury turned in a blank piece of Blank sheet. Got, the evidence room got lost. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's what I'm praying for. Verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. That's the verse that struck me when I was going. I actually rewound it and said, what? Rewound it again, what? Rewound it again, really? Yeah. Verse 9, And the Lord was very angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing. See, the Lord had addressed this with Solomon. Right? He'd addressed it with him. And Solomon didn't hear it. With all the privilege 